Jesus said in Matthew, he said, they have eyes, yeah. but they don't see. They have ears, right. but they don't hear. But then he said, blessed are you mm. who have eyes yep. to see. We're going to show you a secret in God's word that's going to open up the windows of heaven yes. and pour you out mm. such a blessing. There won't be room enough to receive it. Stay tuned. God, through his word, is about to open up your eyes. And man, will you be blessed. <laughs> You know, I love that teaching where Jesus said what we just started the program with. He said, but blessed are you yeah. who have eyes to see. I and, know. and, and, uh, you know, I love the revelation. You, you have yes. to study the Bible through the eyes of a Jewish Jesus exactly. and a Jewish Moses yeah. in order to understand what Jesus is talking yeah. about. Well, and you know, last week you, or you taught a little bit about Moses having eyes to see. Right. And you really explained it in a great way and how that physically takes us to another level. Yeah. Talk about well, that. And that's what Jesus is talking about. When you read when, when Moses came up, down the path and he came upon the burning bush, he said, I, the Bible says he saw a bush that was not conceived, so he turned to see. Hmm. Now, that's the same word that Jesus in Hebrew is saying. Yeah. They have eyes but they don't see, right. blessed are us who have eyes that we see. Yeah. When Moses turned to see mm. the burning bush, yeah. it's va, in Hebrew, va ya'ar, but in this case, it has a little yod. The yod, the, like a little comma, yeah. the yod is the first letter in the name of God. Right. So when Moses turned to see mm. the burning wow. bush, he turned to see what it was that God awesome. was doing. When Jesus says they have eyes, but they don't see, see. it's vayar, but there's no yod. Wow. They have, they, they see the wow. word of God, but they can't see what God is doing. Yeah. But blessed are you yeah. who, when you read or hear the word of God, you see what God is yes. doing. And tis that mm. so applies right now no when we're into Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. Sukkot is the time where God says, I'll open up the windows of heaven mm. and pour you out such a blessing. Yes. How many yes. of us have heard Malachi, oh return goodness. unto me, test you yeah. to me, and I'll return yep. unto you. How do we return? In tithes and in offerings. And we yes. don't understand the offering is three times yeah. a year we come before the Lord. Three times yeah. a year on Passover, on Pentecost, Shavuot, and on Sukkot, Feast right. of Tabernacles. And we see it, yeah. but we don't see what God is doing. And Mercy. we miss out on the blessing yes. because no one's taught us no how important Passover is, how mm. important Pentecost is. And especially, this is the most important yes. time. This is the time of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Amen. and Sukkot, the Feast Amen. of Tabernacles because we've been quoted revelations that these festivals are a shadow. Right. They're a shadow of things to come. Yeah. And when we hear that they're a shadow, we think there's something, there's something less. I mm -hmm. think I said last week, yeah. oh, he's a shadow of his former self. Right. So it, he's really insignificant. Mm -hmm. But in Hebrew, the word shadow is not something less. Yeah. When we come, when, when you, when you mm. understand what Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and to bring the yeah. first fruit offering during the Feast of Tabernacles, no it's a shadow yep. of things to come. It's a rehearsal of yeah. what will someday happen, yes. but it's not a lesser thing. Listen to me. It's not a lesser right. thing, but the word shadow in Hebrew literally means to elevate mm. to a higher place. Amen. And then mm. the Bible says in awesome. Psalms 91 yeah. that we who are in the secret place yeah. will abide. Yes. You know, and, and you think about it, the, uh, vaya are, how many of us read Malachi or read 30, 60, 100 fold, but we don't see it. Yeah. 
Right. We know. How many of you would like to have <laughs> 30, 60, 100 fold return? But we don't see what God is saying yeah. because Jesus didn't just pull up yeah. 30, 60, 100 exactly. fold. 30 is Passover, mm -hmm. 60 is Shavuot, Pentecost, right. three times a year. And the hundred fold, the most important one is oh, right goodness. now. Yeah. And if we don't see it, if we don't see what God is saying, the window closes mm. and we miss out on the blessing. Mm. That's why it excites me when we're doing these because we know whoever's watching this right now, yes. the ancient Jewish wisdom says, you didn't choose to watch this. Yeah. You were ordained by God to watch yes. this because he will open the eyes of the Gentiles Amen. and they can see yeah. via R, not just see black print on white pages, yes. but see the mysteries Amen. of the kingdom. You know, you think, and people say, well, that's Old Testament. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the Torah, yeah. but I came to make it alive. Amen. And then he says, not one yod mm. or tittle will wow. pass away until it's fulfilled. If you're watching today, God has ordained Amen. you to be one whose yes. eyes will see what God is doing, that yes. yod, and you'll be fulfillment of the end time Amen. transfer of wealth. Yes. This is the most yes. exciting prosperity time Amen. of the year, uh, yeah. but I believe yeah. this really launches us into the end time transfer Amen. of wealth. You know, last night at church, I had someone come up to me afterwards and say, I feel like I've missed out on so much. I've been a Christian my whole life. I never knew. And you actually talked to them and said, listen, you're the candidate for the multiplied outpouring. Absolutely. Because God will never let his word come back void. No, and, and you know, and, and, and the rabbis say that it's the Gentiles. Yeah. The Gentiles who understand Passover, the offering of Passover, yeah. the Gentiles who understand the offering of Shavuot, Amen. Pentecost, yeah. and the Gentiles are the Christians who understand Rosh Hashanah, Amen. Yom Kippur, and Sukkot, yes. and that first fruit offering Amen. of Sukkot. When they understand these things, yeah. you know, one of the greatest rabbis in the history of the world, Rabbi Schneerson, who yeah. I, I read everything he wrote, mm -hmm. one of his last speeches was right before he passed away, to thousands and thousands of Jewish followers, he said, the, the Messiah is ready to come. Yeah. But one thing, wow. the eyes of the Gentiles have My to be open and they will begin to understand mm. Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur Ooh. and Sukkot. They'll begin to understand yes. Shabbat. When we come back from break uh, in a few minutes, w I'll explain what Rosh Hashanah, how are yeah. these a shadow of things to come? But let me show you something here. When we're talking about the feast, we're talking about those of you who hear, have ears to hear yeah. and eyes to see. And you go, you know what? I'm getting, I'm getting my best offering ever yes. in. Yes. This is the end of Jubilee. Amen. This is the year after the blood moons yeah. when the world will change. Amen. We will abide mm. under the shadow. We will Amen. live at a higher level. Look mm. at this. He who dwells in the secret place, tis, yes. of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Mm. When, you, when we Amen. bring a first fruit, yes. it's not a little thing. No. It is something that will cause us to abide, live, yeah. live, live under the blessing yes. of these festivals. Yes. Live under it. And, and this one, Sukkot, is the most important, but I want to point out the first part, he who dwells in the secret place. Yeah. What is the secret place? He who dwells mm. in the secret place. Jesus said, when I see you yeah. in the secret yes. place. Now, l listen to what I'm about to say, and I mm. say this all the time, that it, for you to see that financial spiritual breakthrough yeah. You have to respond to the first fruit offering that that window yeah. that only passes by three times a year. Mm. This one is the father of all the yeah. windows. This is the most important offering you can ever give. Amen. So number one, for you to move into that blessing, you, you, you're watching right now because it's ordained by God mm -hmm. that you hear this. But we also want to sow something into you. And I say this mm. all the time, Tiz and I say this, yeah. we never give you trinkets uh -uh. that you put on a shelf no. somewhere. 
Think about Psalms 91, the secret place. Yeah. In order, and this is why we love teaching you the Jewish roots. In order to understand the truth that will set you free, yes. you have to begin to read the teachings of a Jewish Jesus, Amen. a Jewish Paul, a Jewish yep. Moses. What is the secret place? Remember when Jesus was walking in the market and the Bible said a woman who had an issue of blood mm -hmm. had it 12 years. Yeah. And she looked at Jesus and she said, in English it says, if I could touch the hem of his garment. Yes. But if you look at your Bible, the word hem is a word that has substituted the original language. Let me explain to you the tallit. The tallit is the Jewish prayer shawl. It is your secret place. It is your holy of holies. It is your prayer closet. Mm -hmm. you know, I can remember we were teaching this on TV one time and the guy goes, they didn't have closets in the time <laughs> of Jesus. What, understand that many of the early church fathers, not, not the time of Jesus, mm -hmm. but three or 400 years later, yeah. changed wording so it wouldn't sound Jewish. Sure. That our attention yeah. would not be on Jerusalem, but our religious attention yeah. be on Rome. So let me show you. When the woman said, if I could touch the mm. hem of his yes. garment, Jesus would have been wearing a tallit, yeah. a Jewish prayer shawl that every man, every rabbi mm -hmm. was commanded to wear. Yeah. Your tallit has three parts to it. One is the main amount, and this is a beautifully made one. Yeah. One is the main amount of the fabric. Mm -hmm. This is your secret place. Yeah. This is your prayer closet. When you go in and you put the tallit on and you cover your head, you close the door, yeah. it keeps the enemy from making you double-minded. I, I, I'll teach this on another time. So the main part is your prayer closet. On every tallit, are 613 knots. These mm -hmm. are kosher knots. Yeah. And they represent the word of God, the promises of God, the teachings yeah. of God. Why did the woman say, if I could touch the hem of his garment? But if you look in your Bible, it usually says in small print below, it's not a hem, but a wing. wing. This is not a hem, but a wing. So why did the woman, when she saw Jesus say, if I could touch the wing of his garment, right. I know that I'd be made whole. The reason is, is because she knew what Malachi, the prophet said, mm -hmm. when the Messiah came, yeah. he would come with mm. healing in his wing. And so when the Messiah came, he would take the logos, the word yeah. of God, and take your prayers, your mm. secret place, and through the Messiah, he would make wow. the logos in the rhema and bring answers mm. to your prayer. When you put on a yes. tallit, and look at what it says mm. again, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, yeah. this is the prophecy of Jews beginning to wow. understand, their, or as Christians understanding their Jewish roots, shall abide under the shadow, wow. the festivals and the blessing, not temporary, yes. but we will live, Amen. you will live. Yeah. When you put the tallit on and you shut the door, mm. you will feel a difference yeah, in your prayer. Absolutely. When you send in that first fruit offering and we take a first fruit offering in your behalf to Israel, you will begin to live every day Amen. under the blessing Amen. of those anointings. Yep. We'll be right back. 